Hello everyone and welcome to New Glenn Testing. Today Blue Origin decided to announce a new rocket, a, an orbital rocket in contrast to their new Shepard rocket and it is named New Glenn and they gave us adequate numbers for me to start speculating about it a little bit and so I've built uh, the two versions that they had. They had a two-stage version and a three-stage version and I have edited engines to match the stats that I have of the BE-4 and uh, BE-3 engines, also the BE-4 vacuum version and the BE-3 vacuum version. And the engines I edited were actually RS-25s for the BE-4s and a J-2 for the BE-3. I've uh, adjusted the masses of the, for the BE-3 because it wouldn't be reasonable to have the same mass as J-2. But I, I'm going to assume a few things. Uh, there is data that I do not have and so let me just tell you up front what data I don't have. Uh, the BE-4's nozzle ratio I don't have. The engine efficiencies I do not have. Any engine masses or any dry masses like tank mass or interstage mass I don't have. And also the BE-3's chamber pressure. The chamber pressure and no nozzle ratio are very important uh, as far as calculating the ISP, which they also haven't released. But I do know the chamber pressure of the BE-4 and, and I could sort of eyeball the nozzle ratio based on images and so I've come up with uh, certain estimates for the performance of the BE-4. Uh, we know the thrust of the BE-4 because they told us the thrust of the seven engines on the first stage of the New Glenn and so the BE-4 has, a, each engine has an approximate thrust of 2446.5 kilonewtons which is about the same, a little bit more than the space shuttle main engines. Um, based on my calculations using the chamber pressure that I was able to obtain, 19, uh, 1950 PSI chamber pressure, uh, I got uh, 315 seconds of ISP at sea level, 338 in vacuum for a methane burning engine. Uh, for the BE4U, which is the vacuum one, which is the second stage here, there's only one, uh, that I got 2650 kilonewtons and 364 seconds vacuum ISP. So that, uh, assuming the same chamber pressure. So I know this is a little bit technical and all, but I want to make clear what my assumptions were. Uh, I have uh, assumed certain uh, utilization, 86, the default utilization, I just kept that default utilization for the first stage uh, for consistency. And then I did up the utilization for the second stage to 94, which is uh, comparable to other upper stages. And the diameter on the top there should actually be like that. Okay, um, the textures that they showed had uh, a silver fairing. I do not have a silver fairing. I did my best with that little silver bit there. Uh, other than that, the goal is to test the payload capacity. I've done a few tests already, and I've come up with a likely payload capacity of 48 tons for this two-stage version to low Earth orbit. So we'll, we'll fly it and see how it works. Um, there is the question of stage timing. Uh, I have gone with a stage timing that is comparable to the Falcon 9, which I think is reasonable given the desire to return the first stage. And so if they're going to try and recover the first stage, the first stage really can't go too much farther than the Falcon 9's first stage and still expect to turn back. And uh, so this is about right. Actually, with only seven engines here, it doesn't do as much of the work as the Falcon 9's first stage does because the Falcon 9's first stage has nine engines so it actually gives the, uh, the second stage a bit more of a push than this would. Um, you can see the th uh, sea level thrust weight ratio set uh, at bare minimums because we're trying the maximum out and uh, again I tried to uh, shove in as much fuel as possible to see what the maximum situation would be and we'll see how that works. So let's take it out to the launch pad and then after that we'll try the three stage one I'll talk about that. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to throttle down and I'm going to use a KOS script for consistency's sake. So uh, here we go. I'm just going to type run uh, new Glenn, which is the script I tested it out with. That's why I'm running this script. So here we go. Okay, and I, I sort of hope that. Uh, that they use the catchphrase uh, Godspeed New Glenn every time they launch this thing. But anyway, that, that's just a historical reference. So, there are uh, 
possibilities that would uh, render my estimates incorrect. Uh, first of all, uh, if there's a different nozzle ratio to the engines, it's sort of a, tr a nozzle ratio wouldn't make the engines overall more efficient in terms of ISP, but as long as the chamber pressure is what uh, I've got as the chamber pressure, uh, what they would do is sort of trade off sea level and vacuum ISP. So the bigger the nozzle ratio, the less the sea level ISP and the more the vacuum ISP, more or less. That's probably more important for the upper stage than lower stage. It's certainly possible to get more than a 364 second ISP from the upper stage uh, with a longer nozzle. But longer nozzle also means higher mass. So that's the trade-off you have to work with. So here we go. And again, it's a 48 ton payload. I started out with a 60 ton payload and worked my way down. It really couldn't carry a 60 ton payload. Um, it uh, couldn't carry a 54 ton payload, which is what F Falcon Heavy would have. Uh, I got it to 48 and that seems to be where it's at. There might be some other thing that, uh, for instance, a uh, more efficient upper stage would be helpful. Uh, a lighter weight upper stage engine. The upper stage engine right now is fairly heavy. So very conservative uh, estimates. I've got the upper stage engine as like four tons, which is pretty darn heavy. Uh, these lower stage engines are about uh, three tons. So, so yeah, there is certainly room for and uh, you know, your tank utilization might be better off for them. Though, given the height, this is the right height. So, given the height of the vehicle, I don't see how the tank utilization could be too much too far off from this though they could have lightweight structures and stuff like that so this might be heavier than what they have for a return it would have already had to be shut off and uh, the first stage would have to make its way back which means that the payload mass obviously wouldn't be 48 tons it'd be uh, somewhere between 30 and 36 tons would be the maximum payload mass if they want to bring back the first stage be my guess though I'm not really good at bringing back first stages right now so that is the downside <laughs> once I get good at bringing back first stages I promise I'll try it again and see how much I can put on the top there okay so this is the BE4U the vacuum engine and again uh, 2650 kilonewtons uh, I've got 364 seconds of ISP and the burn times are important uh, so the first stage had a little bit less than three minutes uh, this has uh, seven minutes and 28 seconds that could be different uh, for the three stage version it makes more sense for this stage to have less than seven minutes and 28 seconds it would be better for it to have maybe like six minutes or so because with the three stage version you're putting a hydrolock stage on top and that's more efficient so you'd rather have that burning for longer and we'll talk about that once we get to the three stage version I've got a little problem with my payload floating above the fairing I'm not entirely sure why that is oh another interesting possibility is if this engine has substantially more thrust than I think it will um, I've only adjusted the thrust based on the ISP, but it could have much more thrust if uh, there's something fundamental different about it. Maybe the chamber pressure is actually higher for the vacuum engine, I don't know. As sort of a baseline for the BE-4, I assumed that the, that the sea level ISP would have to be very similar to the sea level ISP for the RD-180 because the BE-4 is going to be used on the Vulcan rocket and replace the RD-180 in that setup. So yeah, it would have to have at least that sea level ISP. Not hard with the methane and oxygen, by the way. In fact, altogether I'd say the numbers are fairly conservative and uh, could be improved. Uh, with uh, 1950 PSI chamber pressure, it has half the chamber pressure of the RD-180. And so, if th they could easily improve performance if they could go to a higher chamber pressure and uprate it like that. 
and then it would have much better ISP. On the other hand, that could cause more wear and tear on the engine and make it less reliable, uh, less capable of restarting, which is very important if they want to bring back the first stage and reuse it. So keeping a low chamber pressure might make reusability a little bit easier. As you can see, we're temporarily going down a little bit. And that's because of the current low acceleration of the stage. He'll pick it back up again soon. We are going to uh, about 30 degree inclination here. So here now the vertical speed is picking up. We don't really go below 150 kilometers. So we'll start going back up again. And once it does, the pitch can be moderated. It's held a 29 degree pitch all the way through here. This is very similar to what would happen with the second stage of a Saturn V, for instance. Okay, and engine shutdown 290 by 167.5 and 51 meters per second left. And we can separate the payload and see that the payload is 47.998 tons. So that's 48 tons. At least that's what I'm going to call it. So, uh, given all the assumptions, let's go back to the VAB and see our numbers again. So again, the first stage vacuum ISP 338, second stage 364, and with that and the burn times, uh, 2 minutes and 50 seconds and 7 minutes 28 seconds, uh, 48 tons of payload to orbit. Uh, not much margin though. Uh, and a bit of inefficiency because of the low thrust to weight ratio that the second stage starts out with. Uh, a bit unavoidable, un unfortunately. But let's try the third, uh, three stage version. Okay, so here we are. And the three stage version has a BE3U, which has 453 seconds of ISP. I've assumed 460 kilonewtons, which is the same as the BE3, which is probably wrong. It probably has a different thrust, but the thrust is hardly a limiting factor in this case. It depends on the particular setup of the vehicle. I need to actually go outside because it's so big. Um, we've got a floating payload again. Let's correct that here. Uh, so uh, the payload I've got, we, I'm going to blatantly assume that the goal of this is to launch a payload on translunar injection and uh, possibly even escape. Uh, and given that, and also assuming that the second stage timing doesn't change from the 7 minutes and 28 seconds, uh, this is uh, close to the best setup, and we're talking about 15 tons to the moon or to escape. Uh, the caveat is that that's not really using the third stage very much. Now, this is approximately the right height, so it doesn't look like they are reducing the size of the second stage on this uh three-stage version, and it wouldn't make sense to do so anyway. It'd be crazy to have a different second stage physically, though they could underfuel it uh, to about six minutes and then have a larger third stage. Um, again, the reason why you would all want to underfuel it is so that the thrust-to-weight ratio is higher, and if the thrust-to-weight ratio is higher, then it can carry a heavier third stage. Right now, the thrust-to-weight ratio I have here is approximately the same as we had for the second, the two-stage version. Uh, if it's any lower, it would struggle to make orbit. So that's why I didn't want to go any lower with that. So 15 tons is uh, basically my estimate, assuming you're flinging it to the moon or on escape. Now, could this be used to carry a heavier payload just to low Earth orbit? Maybe. Um, but again, uh, you would want to reduce the second stage time for that. And maybe the actual version for... Uh, for this rocket instead of having a utilization of 94 maybe it has the same utilization as the lower stage and then it's a little bit better off and then you can increase the third stage size and then that could probably lift a little bit more I'm going to go with the optimal situation oops that didn't end up having the same there we go okay uh, so Assuming the optimal situation for the two-stage version and then just slapping a th third stage on it and trying our best. But uh, four minutes and 30 second uh, third stage seems a little bit underwhelming considering what could be there. But anyway, uh, it is the right height at least, so that's nice. Um, yeah, I do have a version with full recoverability. Oh, I do have landing legs, by the way. 
Uh, unfortunately, I only have the SpaceX lying legs, so that's a little bit of a downer, but, uh, you know, we make do. But uh, the recoverable version, the only difference is it has to have little hydrazine RCS packs and little uh, hydrazine thrusters. Uh, those add negligible mass to the first stage. Uh, the main thing would be just to uh, reserve the right amount of fuel, which, um, judging from what SpaceX does, is about 15% uh, for a return to launch site. And that's certainly doable. You can see uh, not much delta V is imparted by this first stage compared to the second stage. Let's see it launch, though. Okay, here we are, and KOS, and I'm going to use the exact same script, which would not be the best thing to do, but um, th th there's probably opportunity for more optimization, and then you'd have to use a completely different thing if you wanted to launch it on a steeper trajectory to help the first stage to return. But for now, I'll uh, just for consistency's sake, I'll just use exactly the same script to launch this. Okay, we are underway. Seven engines. And actually, uh, using the SSME models, the engines just fit perfectly inside the expanded base of the rocket. And I suppose that's why we have an expanding, expanded base for that rocket, to fit the engines in. Maybe, I don't know. Incidentally, if the BE-4 had the same nozzle ratio as the SSMEs, I think it would be a little bit more efficient on the vacuum ISP. It might hurt the sea level ISP by a couple of seconds, but not much. Apparently they're building this rocket, or intend to build it, at Cape Canaveral directly, instead of uh, trucking it around. And so it'll be launching from launch Complex 36, so that's all sorted out already. They're quite serious about it. So again, if I was recovering, I would have already shut it down and tried to recover the first stage. But if SpaceX, with their wonderful computers, and probably Blue Origins with their wonderful computers, would shut down here, and that would probably be enough to bring it back also. Where I shut down, it's got like 3,000, 4,000 meters per second. Once the once the first stage separates, of course, it doesn't have the burden of the second and third stage or anything like that. So it has way more delta V than is displayed here. Okay, separation and the third. That's the second stage. Ah, I did not mean to stage the fairing at the same time as engine ignition on the second stage. The fairing is supposed to separate at 100 kilometers, but I guess I must have. Uh, done something wrong. Okay. Uh, for the sake of the script, I'm gonna have a dummy stage here. Because it's gonna try and stage the ferrying at 100 kilometers. Let's see if disaster ensues. Good. Dummy staging worked. I don't know what, uh, I, I think somebody mentioned that these are RCS thrusters and so what they functionally do is if you turn them off in the VAB, uh, this would turn them on. So that's interesting to know. So again, we are holding at this 29 degree pitch. This is not the worst pitch ever, uh, the upper stage of like Atlas V or Delta IV both hold at a much higher pitch because they're both relatively underpowered compared to the base stage. But still, uh, it's a little bit disconcerting all the time. Whenever you can't uh, keep it at prograde, it's always disconcerting. This time with the heavier load, you'll note that we are dipping to a lower altitude than before. Rather than uh, keeping above 150 kilometers at, with the added mass of the third stage, uh, we're really skirting it. It's uh, 
quite a burden for it. Uh, the total mass with the third stage and the payload is 54 tons. So uh, 6 tons over what we tested with the two-stage version, so that's why it's dipping lower here. But now vertical speed is recovering, and hopefully we won't get too low. This is not a huge problem except for the possibility of overheating the, the third stage or second stage tank. So this time with the heavier load you can see we dipped to 129 kilometers before picking back up again. It is really difficult to try and put anything more on on this rocket. Okay, uh, 12 seconds now and the rocket is trying to moderate that vertical speed. Time to lap laps, this is growing quite quickly so getting a little bit out of control there. That's why it's pitching down. We will probably have some eccentricity to our orbit. But here's the BE-4U. And there we go, 465 by 140. Engine shutdown, 3,335 call it. Uh, it's varying because of the nozzle tilting. But uh, yeah, uh, definitely enough to transfer to the moon and uh, for escape probably. Uh, so 15 tons, let's just verify. Uh, well, I mean, uh, the whole stage in orbit right now is 49.3 tons, so you could say that uh, with this version, including this stage, you can get 49 tons, but anyway, it's very tight. Let us separate this. And so this payload here is 15 tons. All right, so that's the basic idea. I... Who knows? Who knows? Uh, this might be close to the mark. I, I'm just putting it out there and we'll see how close I get as far as the new Glenn. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so uh, I was just interested to see what this rocket might be capable of. It's got interesting stages. I think the BE-3 vacuum is a very interesting engine because it's sort of filling a niche that we don't have an engine for. Something not quite as powerful. It's basically as powerful as the as the um, Earth departure stage for the SLS, but it's just one engine, so that's nifty. And uh, so there's possibilities there, and of course methane burning engines are always welcome. Alright, so thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.